Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the John Hollow Fifth Quarter Show. We're glad you guys could join us this morning because it's a kind of a happy day for us here in Tullahoma today. I'm Jim Fuller. I'm filling in for John Gray today, who is out of town, and he's going to be sorry he missed this one for sure. <laughs> Coach, he'd a great game. He'd be gloating a little bit. He, right would, now. he absolutely would be. He, I'm sure he's a happy camper about it anyway because it was a great night for the Tullahoma Wildcats and. Uh, uh, What's your take on the game? I'm just proud of our young men. They came out ready to play and uh, and played hard, played hard all the way through the game. Uh, we've made some improvement over last week. Obviously, Shelbyville's a rather fine team. Uh, but uh, I was just proud of the way we handled things. Uh, sometimes in the big game uh, atmosphere, which was a great atmosphere last night. Both communities turned out supporting their teams. and. Uh, it was exciting. I thought our student section was fantastic last night. I, I know our players appreciated the support, uh, but uh, our defense swarmed last night, and uh, that's the thing that jump, will jump out at you on the tape is that it wasn't one player getting to the ball or two players. It was always five, six, seven, eight players. The defense gave the offense a short field all night long. Uh, we returned one punt for a touchdown. We returned another punt that put us into a scoring position. Mm -hmm. But ended up with very much offense, but we scored a lot of points, and that's what you want to do. And, you know, and I kind of thought that maybe coaches get a lot of blame when you lose. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of thought maybe uh, the, the, the coaches did a great job last night in getting those young men ready to play. Uh, they seemed to know what was coming every play. And well, and credit to our defense. I'm telling you, um, I'll tell you during the video the offense that we prepared for mm -hmm. as they came out with something completely different than what they had done last week versus Franklin County. And, um, and, and I thought our kids still played well. They made what adjustments they needed to make. And um, last week, uh, we were getting pushed back quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I thought this week uh, our defense made some strides forward. We stayed lower, and uh, we either neutralized or the push was to their side of the line of scrimmage, and I thought that was crucial. I think defense was a huge factor in last night's game, I believe, in the first half. Uh, uh, Coffee County actually had minus yards and from scrimmage in the first half. Yeah, I, I think it was a, a, just a fantastic job by Coach Sis and the defensive staff getting our young men ready to play. And then uh, they turned it loose last night. And um, you made that statement about coaches getting blamed for losses. Well, most of the time we can be pretty guilty <laughs> of that because I sure have lost a lot more games than I will ever win anymore because uh, players make plays, and that's what makes the football right. uh, exciting. That's what gives you a chance to win uh, is players making plays. And so. And you played a lot of guys last night, a lot of young guys uh, throughout the game, and they performed, it seemed like, very well also. We talked about that at halftime, and uh, and we're proud of everybody that got on the field. Everybody got on the field that was eligible to get on the field last night. Okay. And um, we've got a couple that, uh, between injuries or uh, transfer rules or uh, just not ready to, to go yet, they're still in some steps to get uh, things where they can play. Uh, everybody played that dressed last night. Uh, I take it back. Now that I'm thinking about it. We had one freshman that did not play, but he served a vital role on the sideline to us. He mm -hmm. was charting stuff for us. Uh -huh. And um, we, um, I, I'd really forgotten about that until just now. <laughs> right. That everybody had gotten to play, though, that was right. able to play. And that makes that's probably a good experience for these young men later on I hope in so. their career. I, I'm a big believer in trying to build depth for the next. Uh, I played at Maryville High in the 70s, and every year it was like we reloaded. Uh, I remember talking to my old head coach about it, and he had a philosophy. Um, my philosophy had to change over the years because the game changed so much. But any time we got up by three scores, he started substituting. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if he graduated a whole backfield, that was okay because the next crew had already gotten experience the previous right. year when the games, it was still against varsity competition. And 
Uh, we didn't even have junior varsity football back in those days. You either played ninth grade or you played varsity. And mm -hmm. so, uh, but anyway, that's our philosophy, and I hope that it pays off dividends for us. Uh, as we tried to let some other people get some experience. Yeah, and I think some of those guys that are really big stars now, uh, a couple of years ago were freshmen and, 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 and they were having to play at that point. That's and, exactly and it, right. I assume that's paying off now. I hope so. I think it did. You know, yeah. I, I remember when this group of seniors were um, freshmen, we took a pretty good pounding in the coffee pot yeah. game. And we took another good pounding from them as when they were sophomores and then last year. Uh, we made a big comeback against them and uh, won 42-41. And this time, uh, this group of seniors uh, uh, basically dominated the football game. And and folks, you know, if you didn't watch this two or three years ago, I remember Coach Olive saying at some point there'd be some vindication here for these young men, the freshmen and sophomores, uh, who were taking a beating at that point, yeah. that there'd be some vindication at some point in time. And I think we might have seen that last night. Yes. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Stay with us. We'll be right back with the game right after this. Are you ready for some football? Are you ready for cool days and cold nights? We're here warming up to serve our community. Troop Jacket Refrigeration would like to congratulate the 2019 class of Tullahoma. Go Cats! Since 1889, Traders Bank has been helping our neighbors realize their dreams. Whether our customers are looking to put a roof over their heads, try their hand at entrepreneurship, or see themselves behind the wheel of a shiny new car. The folks at Traders Bank have always been ready to dive in with them. Because at Traders, we lend you more than just money. We lend you our good name. Traders Bank, you're welcome. Attention, attention, Tullahoma and surrounding areas. Spinelli's Pizzeria is now open at 121 Northwest Atlantic Street in downtown Tullahoma. They specialize in Philadelphia-style pizzas that you can order by the pie or by the gigantic slice. Spinelli's also has great sandwiches with breads imported from Philly, loaded stromboli, salads, and desserts. They are open from 11 a.m. until 3 a.m. with delivery every day. So stop by Spinelli's and get a slice. choices we make today will impact tomorrow. Choosing natural gas today is the responsible energy choice for your home, your family, and our environment. Almost all natural gas we use is produced right here in North America. And with plentiful gas reserves, we can enjoy a safe and reliable energy future. Natural gas, the comfortable and responsible energy choice for today and tomorrow. Brought to you by Elk River Public Utility District. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and news makers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. by accident and, uh, <laughs> and so anyway uh, I'm not sure what the punishment is for that one but uh, may find out during is, the week. Is that a TSSAA rule? Yes. Okay. Four is the most you can have and we just had a miscommunication and um, so anyway 
We have Ty Cox standing there, number 52, number 10, Caleb Stroop, number 16, Peyton Howard, number 21, Kobe Burks, and be honest with you, I didn't get to that last one right there, and it should have been uh, Bryson Corn, who's our permanent captain, number nine. Uh, we put the ball in the end zone, but we were off sides, and so um, we had to re-kick from our own 35. Got to break down and make those hits. Cooper Lawson hangs on long enough until the rest of the cavalry can get there. And they get two people in motion right there. That's their biggest gain of the night, I believe, until late in the ball game. Wiped out by an illegal shift penalty. Come back and they try to run the exact same play. Smarty Lane and company and uh, we just get a lot of the Cardinal uniforms to the, to the football here. Race Marin right where he's supposed to be and again, doesn't make the tackle but he blows the play up and a host of Wildcats and they don't get a delay a game here. Um, which will back it up another five. And uh, we have a new rule in high school football this year. We're playing with a 40-second clock instead of the standard uh, of the referee chopping the ball into play. Uh, so it's something a little new, a little different. Uh, Caleb Stroop almost had that interception. Samari Lane was putting the heat on. A half he punts the ball there and uh, we're a little deep, but we'll make the adjustment on the next one. We open up running Bryson. And he just outruns the linebacker and almost turns that corner. We're gonna come back right here and we're gonna hit Kobe Burks down the right sideline. Uh, we got him in man-to-man -man coverage on this side of the field and Kobe's able to separate and the guy just barely gets him knocked out of bounds. We line up right here uh, and we're gonna go on two and they're gonna jump off sides. And so we're gonna move it down a little closer and then we're gonna just pitch the ball to Bryson here and He's gonna make one guy miss right there and gets into the end zone. Brian Nims doing the snapping. Ben Fulton holding. Grace Marin puts it through and we're up 7-0. Uh, great start to the ball game. We held them, made them punt the football and the offense is taking it right down. That ball landed about five yards deep in the end zone. Great job kicking the ball by race. And you can see that they're in there foot to foot and they're in a double wing and they go to a wing eye some with motion. Uh, that's not what we had prepared for. Um, they try to run a speed sweep and again, the outside contain man, race Marin, right where he needs to be and turns it into his teammates. And they're gonna try a quick throw. Rivers Jenkins tips the ball up into the air. Quentin Howard makes the INT, his second one in two ball games. And we're gonna try to hit Hunter Palmer here. And this time we'll run. Uh, their DB reached out and hit our man before the snap there, so we pick up five yards. And we're gonna run Hunter Palmer right here. And great job blocking there by Jewel and by Jake Hollinsworth and Hunter Palmer scores the touchdown and then get a call to Try to go for two there, and by the time we snap it, they had already made their adjustment, and then we 
had to wait for the official to put the ball in play here. Is that so something you decided before the game that you were going to go for two? Uh, it's just something that we have in as part of a package, and if they see certain things, then they go for it. Uh, if they, you know, most of the time you don't just bring everybody back over, and we got a little anxious there. That's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> Made a made a call that, and if it, everybody had been ready for it, then uh, it, it would have probably worked. But we did. Good job, everybody swarming to the ball. That's got to make you feel good as a coach when there's that many people right around. The ball uh, it made me feel great last night because I'm sitting there, still worried about that they may get a big play or something and get back into the ball game here. And the defense is just playing outstanding. I know that uh, Coach Britt's got to be happy with his defensive tackles as uh, they made big time improvement from week one to week two. Our defensive ends have been solid all year. Great job right here. This is a fourth down play from their own 35 and he doesn't make a yard. Matt Ross has got him from the back and everybody else stuffing him. So. We're able to take over in great field position. And we fumble it back to them, though. So we go from getting a big turn, taking over in big, in a great field position, and we turn it over right there. And there's a little sweep type action and just Lots of Cardinal jerseys getting to the football. Hunter Jewell, right where he's supposed to be. Had race on one side and Hunter on the other, yeah. and they were the contained guys. So we turned the ball over and we're on a get it right back. That's great pressure. Um, they're going to punt the football here and Kobe Burks is getting ready to catch this one. And uh, about the only interesting thing right here besides some great running, he's going to kill Matt Ross right there and I thought he was going to go down. But instead he comes out of there and then avoids the last guy for the touchdown and uh, I don't know what he said to Matt <laughs> but um, Matt trying to block for him and got clobbered. That was a fantastic run. Fire. There was a lot of people had a shot at him. There. Lots of people yeah. had a shot at him. He just kept those legs moving. And we have to kick again even though they waved the penalty off. Still had to kick it again. And race will do that. And we are now up 20 to zero. And there's still 252 to go in the first quarter. At that point, you're probably feeling pretty good about this. Feeling pretty good because the defense is playing so well. And um, Will Stone pops that one up. They fair catch it. 22 yard line. That's a good place for us to make them start. And they're trying to still push straight up the middle at us and good job by the defense. Being very, very stingy. It kind of looks like Coffee County is a little bit challenged in their passing game at this stage of the game. Uh, they are and they're missing their first quarterback. Yeah. Um, defense gets a turnover right there. Matt Ross with the recovery. Um, but they, the, in their defense, they are missing their first team quarterback. He's been out for these first two ball games. Throw a little swing there to Kobe, even though we got turned around a little bit. And uh, pick up the first down. And we're gonna come back, run Bryson to the right here, and then he's gonna just run over some people and go into the end zone. And so the first quarter's not even over, and we're gonna be up 27-0. You'd probably take that every week, wouldn't you? I would. <laughs> you know, there's, I guess, some programs out there, like Greenville, 
that seem to have a tendency yeah. to do that week in, week out. Again, Will Stone on the kickoff. And now they're trying to hit the quick passes in the flats. Hunter Jewell on the coverage there. They'll try it again here in a minute. It'll be race on the coverage. Hunter turns it back in. Here comes the rest of the Cardinal in black. And Brian Nims got a little speed, runs him down. End of the first quarter. Can't start it All much right. better than what we've done. Yeah, 27 to nothing lead here in the first quarter. And it looked like that maybe you had the edge in team speed. What uh, you think? Yes, definitely. Yeah. And they had the edge in size, and we had the edge in speed. And right now, the way the game of football is played, uh, speed trumps everything. Right. I've heard you say that a few times, and I, that's that's really obvious here. Uh, I think we're supposed to take a commercial break now, aren't yes, we, Coach? We I, are. All right, we are going to take a commercial break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I was looking for a bank that sees me as more than just a credit score or an account balance. A bank that has my best interest at heart and will help me get better at managing my money. That answers to me and not some stockholder somewhere. A bank that's big enough to have everything I need. Checking, savings, loans, credit cards, but small enough to treat me like family. Turns out, I wasn't looking for a bank at all. Ascend Federal Credit Union, banking without the bank. Since 1917, Builder Supply has been the place to go for all your building materials. It's where the contractors have shopped for years. Builder Supply stocks quality Benjamin Moore paint, Tamco shingles, case knives, DeWalt, Stanley, and Makita tools, Peachtree Southern Roads, and Sun Windows, Traders, Grills, Quick Set Locks, General Shale Brick, Yellow Wood, and Pass Load Nail Guns and Nails. Experienced salespeople are there to help you find the right products for your job. So when you're ready to build, whether large or small, think Builder Supply. 301 South Atlantic Street in Tallahoma. The Gondola, located at 412 East Carroll Street, is Tullahoma's oldest pizza, pasta, and steakhouse, featuring all kinds of pizzas, calzones, pastas, and steaks, chicken, pork, sandwiches, and seafood. Check out their daily specials on Facebook. And don't forget that on Saturdays, there's ribs and smoked Boston buns. Add a great variety of appetizers and desserts, and come on in, y'all. Gondola has it all. For carry out, call 455-9738. That's the Gondola Steakhouse, located at 412 East Carroll Street in Tullahoma. Hey, Tullahoma, stop by McMurr's for all your personal and business needs. Copying and finishing service, that's black and white and color copying, one to a thousand. Scan, print, reduce, enlarge up to 36 inches. Brochures, carbonless forms, design services, foam core mounting, fax service, comb and coil binding, lamination up to 40 inches. Wedding services include wedding invitations, wedding programs, and napkins. That's McMurr's, 101 West OG Street, Tullahoma. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. McMurr's. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. And they're going to punt it right here. Ty Cox almost blocks it. And we just need to get out of the way. And again, we're going to take over the football on their side of the 50. And that's good news for most offenses. Uh, right here, we had a little throw on back over here to the boundary. They did a good job taking it away from us. And uh, so we lose yardage right there, and we don't lose yardage again. I believe we're going to get a holding call right here coming up. 
Uh, yep, we hit Hunter Palmer, but they get us for holding out there on the outside and so instead of having a third down and uh, three or four, we lose 14 yards on the play. Uh, and we just barely miss race there going down the sideline. Doesn't make any difference because we actually had a lineman downfield. So third down, we're just trying to run the ball, get as much back upfield as we can, and we don't punt it back to them. Race Marin will be punting. Brian Nims will be doing the deep snapping. So even though we took over on their side of the 50, we didn't, didn't make them pay for it that time. There's racing coverage on the little flat route. And I thought Kobe Burks had an INT right there. If he had, he'd had a touchdown yeah, off the is. INT. Third down and long, and we put some pressure on there. And young man tries to stay on his feet, but uh, good sight. Good job by the defense. Way to come back out and just take over. And so they got a punt it. This time, Mr. Burks will get his hands on it. And here we go. Two great blocks. I wish you could see it from the end zone cut. You have Race Marin mashing somebody over here on the sideline, and you've got Hunter Jewell absolutely clocking his guy, and that's what made that lane down through there. Uh, and we come back, run Bryson here. We actually misblocked the play, but we're going to come right back to it because this time we're going to block it correctly, and when we do, he'll see the cutback lane. He would have seen the cutback lane the last time we blocked it correctly. That's probably a great uh, teaching to him to show him that. Right? That is correct. Now, I'm a big visual guy, and uh, Coach Torres will have the video, and he'll say, hey, right here's who you block. And when you do it right, this is what happens. Right. And so we're up 34-0, eight minutes to go in the first half. Uh, they get a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, so we're kicking off from the 45 of theirs, and Justice Chadwick, freshman kicker, puts that one in the end zone. So you're already putting, uh, putting some substance oh, yes. in this uh, section. Uh, I, I just love having all those, all those defensive players get into the football. Now, this is the offense that we expected. See the big wide splits? Yes. And a full house backfield. That's what we were expecting. Nice way to come up and tackle. Quentin Howard, Caleb Strew. And so that's what we had prepped for. And um, this is the first time we're seeing it in the ball game. And they're going to draw us off sides right here and get a first down. Need to have a little better discipline. Got to anticipate those things in those types of yardage. And that's a great job by Samari Lane. And again, we get another four or five shirts there with him. And Jacoby Thomas on the coverage. Gets a little too excited sometimes, but uh, he's going to be a, a good football player. Again, the defense has come out and done what they need to do. They're going to start shifting to their punt formation. And we've got Jacoby Thomas at quarterback. Brian Nims is now in there playing running back. And I'm sure I won't be able to get everybody listed across through there, but uh, great run there. I know that we've got a couple of people in there. I know uh, 
Jalen Newsom's in there. He's, he was in there the last series. And I see Garrett Harris, and he didn't start. So uh, we've got a good mixture in there right now. And Jacoby trying to run it wide right there. Got us into a third and short. Uh, Kyler Parker's now another sophomore. Is now a quarterback. And Brian Nims takes the handoff and picks up the first down. We have to take a timeout to get lined up. And we're going to try to run the quarterback this way. And linebacker does a pretty good job of filling the hole there. And we'll come back. We're going to run Devlin McGee. And he's going to turn that corner, but they're going to get us for holding on the outside again. We've got to learn to move our feet a little better and get in better position. So instead of us pushing it on down the field, we get backed up. And Kyler almost sneaks through there. Picks up good yardage. We're going to come back and run the same play on fourth down. Kind of in no man's land, and I think he wishes he'd handed that one off. So, Coffee County holds, and they're going to take over. They're at 35, and they're trying to throw it deep again, and Matthew Ross and company get there and get the sack. Five guys are running football there. Yeah. Amazing. And, and that was the best part about it to me is that we kept getting people uh, a good number of defenders around the ball. Wherever it was, we had people moving in that direction. Right. right. Okay. Once again, good coaching. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're coming up on halftime right now. We're going to probably hear from the Tullahoma High School band in this segment. Stay with us, folks. We'll be back shortly. It's football time in Tennessee, and nobody tackles the competition like the Russell Barnett Automotive family. With six different locations, eight new car franchises, over 1,000 new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from, a certified collision center with lifetime paint guarantee, Russell Barnett Hometown Auto Rental. Let our family exceed your expectations at the Russell Barnett Automotive family. And remember, why buy anywhere else? Whether it's a home loan, a business loan, a personal loan, a loan for any good reason, Citizens Tri-County Bank is here to help you with the loans you need. With caring, friendly, lending pros at convenient offices across Tullahoma, we love our community and we take pride in helping people get the loans they need. Citizens Tri-County Bank, focused on making loans for the individuals and businesses of our community. Ah, the glory days. Running to daylight on the gridiron and chasing a ball with a mind of its own. Cheering the team to victory and marching to the beat of your own drum. Memories that last a lifetime. But sometimes we're reminded of our glory days in ways we'd rather forget. Get back in the game. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live and play well. If you're looking for fuel, food, or fun, don't forget the Dameron Brothers stores. The shortstop has fuel, food, and beverages. The Liquor Locker carries all of your favorite brands of wines and spirits. It has party supplies, beverages, and the area's best selection of premium cigars. So for all your party needs, Jeff and Jay say, come on by, and thank you for the support of our businesses.
Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network.
Daddy Billy's Deli Bar and Grill has been open at 119 Northwest Atlantic Street in Tullahoma for over 40 years, serving up good times and great food. Owner Nick Smith has made a great investment to remodel the inside, which is now a non-smoking facility, and add a great outdoor patio area with a covered stage, a fire pit, and a second bar where smoking is allowed. The food remains great at Daddy Billy's, from burgers to paninis, salads, wings, with new items being added all the time. To be part of the good times at Daddy Billy's, 119 Northwest Atlantic Street, downtown Tullahoma. Go nuts! Mm. Tasty! stained or crooked? If so, call the dental practice of Dr. Mike Long. For a wider, brighter, more attractive smile, Dr. Long offers cosmetic dentistry at its best through whitening, bonding, and veneers. Dr. Long also uses laser technology, eliminating anesthesia and drilling. When you are ready to enhance your smile, call Dr. Mike Long, family practice dentistry for 29 years. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. to the John Ollie Fifth Quarter Show. Uh, Coach Ollie, we've got a couple of young men joining us on the, on the set now. Do you have anything good to say about either one of these guys? Just a little bit. I'm telling you, the, we'll start over here on my left. Um, is a, just a really unique young man. Uh, we don't get um, three sport athletes very often in high school anymore. That's true. Uh, but this is Race Marin. He has lettered in football since he was a freshman. He has lettered in basketball since he was a freshman. And he has lettered in baseball since he was a freshman. Did I miss any of that? <laughs> uh, that's a very unusual thing because it takes sure. great commitment. And uh, I don't know what his class rank is, but I would bet that he's uh, in the top 25 in his class and probably even higher than the top 25. So your parents don't have to worry about you getting in trouble because you don't have any time yeah, for that. Yeah, I'm always busy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, anyway, good morning, Race. Good morning. Hey, um, you know, a couple of years ago when you were a freshman, uh, did you dress for the coffee pot game? I did. I remember the you first did. Part I was supposed to go to me. And um, wasn't a very fun experience. No, right? it wasn't. No. And I know that I've got coaches that have told you guys, if you stay, things will get better. And um, it did get better. And the beating that we took when Race was a freshman was about what we delivered last night. And so anyway, nice to see that. And um, Race, uh, he kicks, he punts, he plays defense. Last night he played linebacker. He's normally a uh, corner and has been a safety. Um, and then um, he also plays on the offensive side of the ball at wide receivers. So. That has to be a great help to you guys when he's able to kick it into the end zone and, and there's no return. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Will Stone, who's uh, a young man that plays goalie for our soccer team, uh, I saw him last spring kick one about 80 yards in the air. Yeah. Now, he had a good tailwind, 
but it still went 80 yards in the air. And I started talking to him about, hey, if you can just learn to put a football in the end zone on the kickoff, I got a place for you. Right. And so anyway, um, but what race does for us uh, is, is just, I can't tell you the contribution that he makes. And um, you got anything you want to say about playing in the coffee pot game? Um, it's exciting going out there and you're, like, you're knowing who you play and it's just, the whole week leading up to it is exciting. It's fun. It's a fun experience. I noticed that you and their number three um, got into a, a little battle. Per I mean, the ball was going completely away from you and there's a war going on over <laughs> on the opposite side of the field. Just trying to make my block. <laughs> you blood. Blood. <laughs> right, over here on the right, we have Kobe Burks. And uh, Kobe uh, played football for our middle school in the eighth grade and then didn't play football again until last year when he transferred back here to Tallahoma. And um, it was kind of the coffee pot game last year that you kind of arrived on the scene because I remember. Uh, former coach at uh, Blackman calling me and saying, you know, I knew about Amari, who is Kobe's older brother, one of his older brothers. Um, but he said, Kobe didn't even play football here. So I didn't have a clue that he could do that kind of stuff. And uh, he, uh, he's, he's a young man that has stepped right in. And uh, the one thing that I like about him is he's a cool customer. If we put a special play in for the week, uh, he's normally involved in it. He's one of the ones that we get involved in it because you don't have to worry about him uh, not being able to execute it on ball game night. And so uh, he's going to do one of those special plays here at the start of the third quarter. And um, I think he's going to become a pretty good punt returner. You know, you know, from what we saw last night, I'd have to agree with that. And uh, you, you ran over one of your own players once, though. Did you hurt, hurt, hurt him? I don't know if I did or not, but <laughs> was he in your way? I'm a little bit. So. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> How much pressure does it put on you uh, that your older brother was a pretty good football player as well? Actually, not really. I don't really think about it. Yeah. That's kind of one of like be my own person out there. Okay, well, you're, you're really doing well out there. I have to say, brought a, a lot of excitement to, to the game last night, for Thank sure, you. really. And Kobe plays multi sports, too. He's a baseball player as well as a football yeah. player. And what position do you play? You think you might get him into basketball? Yeah. Uh, center field. Center field, okay, all right. That's where that speed comes into play a little bit, doesn't it? Bit. Yeah, I don't think we ask you, Bryce. What was your what's your uh, position? I play second base. Second base, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm kind of partial to that. That's what I played when I was a kid. That was a long time ago. But <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see if we can get the third quarter going then. Okay. It was our choice, so we're gonna take the football and Hunter Jewel is gonna run behind the blockers there and pick up good yardage, and we're gonna take over in good field position in the first play, Kobe. You want to say what the first play is? Do you remember it? And we're going to throw a little screen to you out to the right. And we're going to pick up a first down. I believe we're running over a Coffee County player that time. Yeah, that's the ones you're supposed to be hitting, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then here's the special play of the week. Uh, Coach Shaw realized that uh, their pursuit, they were over pursuing, he felt like, so we put the reverse in. Ben Fulton makes the chip block there, and the rest of it's history. Anything you want to say? That's my man race after the block for Yeah, okay. Yep. And, uh, so anyway, uh, what enthusiasm they had coming out at halftime. We've been there. You talk about playing for pride and you talk about let's take it to them and so forth. Uh, we tried to deflate them right off the bat and let them know that there's not a chance for a comeback. And Justice Chadwick makes the kick. Jacoby Thomas was the first one there to get to him, but then a host of Wildcats. And I, I just love that. Defensive tackles holding their ground and defensive ends sliding in there. And 
no gain. Defensive end, Matt Ross is the guy that's got him back there. Third and long. All, all these guys play both ways here, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yes, most of our athletes have to play both ways. Uh, Bryson Corn is a player that could play both ways for us that we're not allowing him to play both ways right now. We've got to develop another backup running back before we uh, can turn him loose. We've got to be able to What does Bryson play on defense? Uh, he's a linebacker. linebacker. Yes. And he's a good linebacker. He had a great preseason. Uh, we just, right now, his value to us on the offensive side of the ball is too high until we get a backup running back developed. Good job, River Jenkins there, made the first hit, and then again, there's a host of Wildcats getting there. And the clock runs now, and I don't know, um, once we're up by 35 points, the clock doesn't stop on incomplete passes, out of bounds, anything like that. The only time it stops is on a score. So these next, this third quarter and fourth quarter are gonna go really fast. Make them punt, and Caleb Strew. He's got the football, and he's gonna make a good return and get the ball back over to their side of the field. And uh, I don't think we'll have a starter left on the field. If we do, well, we got one. We got Jake right now. We don't get called for a penalty because we're trying to sub and had too many people in the huddle. But we're going to try to get everybody off the field that's a starter and start playing some other young men. Let them get some experience. Jacoby trying to carry the ball there. Freshman at tackle, I think a freshman at guard, sophomore at guard, uh, and I think a freshman at the other tackle right now. So hopefully getting some really good experience. Kobe trying to throw it to Hunter Jewel there. And <coughs> so we'll punt it away. And this time it's Will Stone doing the punting. And he does a good job. So let's go play a little defense again. And we're beginning to sub in on that side as well. That's C.J. Harden on the coverage there. First year player. Cobb County at this point still has a lot of their starters. I think so. Yeah. And that's the end of the third quarter. Oh, it's going to go that quick. One, that one, it, flash, yeah. 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 It's going to go quick. When that yeah. clock doesn't start, it goes fast. Right. Yeah. I was aware that was going to happen. I meant to tell our uh, people in the control room, don't worry that John and I are talking a lot here because that's we're going to make it up on the, on the game starts. We're going to take another commercial break right now, folks. We'll be right back. The Gondola, located at 412 East Carroll Street, is Tullahoma's oldest pizza, pasta, and steakhouse, featuring all kinds of pizzas, calzones, pastas, and steaks, chicken, pork, sandwiches, and seafood. Check out their daily specials on Facebook. And don't forget that on Saturdays, there's ribs and smoked Boston buns. Add a great variety of appetizers and desserts, and come on in, y'all. Gondola has it all. For carry out, call 455 9738. That's the Gondola Steakhouse, located at 412 East Carroll Street in Tullahoma. When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. 
We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. Mayor Lane Curley is challenging Tullahoma area citizens to join him and walk the Appalachian Trail. And you don't even have to leave Tullahoma. You can get fit this fall by putting one foot in front of the other and walk the Appalachian Trail. You'll win prizes, get weekly fitness tips, and enjoy fun weekly walks with area personalities. You'll feel great getting fit. We want businesses, churches, families, and friends to form a team and join our walk along the Appalachian Trail. Start September 4th, ends October 15th. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Beginning of the fourth quarter, 41-0, Tullahoma Wildcats. And now we're just trying to finish the game out. I think if Cooper had realized that he was throwing the ball uh, to nowhere, he might have had a shot at it. Of course, they didn't throw it a whole lot, so maybe. Yeah. I mean, they're just struggling. Now, we're going to miss a few plays here. Um, watch it from the end zone camera, but we can't watch it today. Right. Uh, they punted the ball there. We're going to take over the ball. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what the play was. If we do run right here, and then we'll catch back up. Um, I believe our quarterback's going to keep the ball to the left. He'll know when the next camera shot. You, you played three quarterbacks in last night, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. we got two sophomore quarterbacks, Kyler Parker and Jacoby Thomas. Uh, we could play Peyton Howard at quarterback, um, but we're uh, he's playing defense at linebacker and uh, so we're going ahead and playing the sophomores. Now, if we had an actual injury to Ben Fulton, then we would, we would, Peyton still get some reps in practice and yeah. so forth. Kyla Parker trying to run, quarterback sweep there, and life's a little tougher on us on running those against their first defense than it is a JV team. Uh, we had a little success Monday night running those against Shelbyville's JV team. And we're going to run Christian Jordan here to the left. And there it all come up and tackling. Uh, we never could turn the corner, never could find a hole to turn it up in. So they hold us on fourth down, and uh, we'll give them the ball at the 40-yard line. And again, defense swarming. That's a lot of young players getting over there. I see Colton Tucker and Trenton Parton. They're going to try to run the quick screen there, and Kyler Parker makes the tackle. And Trent Parton on the tackle. And they're going to try to throw it deep. They'll throw their receiver there. Caleb Williams and Colton Tucker in coverage. And Sam Pote just barely misses him, but Trent and Park. Good job, Trent.
Anthony Wander there, first year player. Uh, on the coverage, and then Xavier Paradis gets the sack, turns the ball over back to us. And we're going to start off running CJ here. And he finds a hole and turns it up the sideline and picks up 15, 20 yards. Gets us back down into their territory, good and deep. And we're going to get a little bit of a high snap right here. Jacoby pulls it down and then uh, just takes off with it. And Matt Marcel, who's kicked the last couple of PATs, is going to kick this one. And so now... Is he a left-footed kicker? He's a left-footed yeah, yeah, yeah. kicker. And uh, he's a really good bass fisherman. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he qualified for the National Bass Tournament. Oh, great. This year. And missing a few tackles there. Somebody's got to run him down, and it's going to be Anthony Wander. Make them line up, snap it again. And Jacob Floyd makes the tackle. And then they're going to throw the ball deep here. And they catch it. Jacoby Thomas saves the touchdown. Make them line up again. Run a play, and they're going to hand it off here straight ahead. And they're going to get into the end zone. And then they'll go for two, and they'll run a sweep to the right. And we're there. We just can't. We're not quite big enough and strong enough yet. As, uh, 17 seconds to go. We're up 48 to 8. They're going to kick off and the clock's going to continue to run. And ball game's over. Uh, as the clock doesn't stop. So that ends it. Our student body, great job. I can't tell you enough. Thank you. And uh, the. Uh, they renamed themselves the Untamed after an app that we're getting ready to release. That'll, if you want to find out what's going on at the high school athletic-wise, uh, when we release that, even for old people like me, <laughs> uh, if you'll put that app on your phone, it'll tell you where soccer's playing this week. It'll yeah. tell you where volleyball's playing. It'll tell you about football, the freshman, the JV, the varsity. And it'll do that all the way through the year. It'll take you through the wintertime sports, and it'll take you through the uh, spring sports. And you can also win some prizes. So you're, you're right, John. That's good for old people like us because we have a tendency to forget stuff. I know. Yeah, you know so. And I get people to ask me, well, do we have a printed schedule or anything? Well, very few people print anything. There's, you know, you do that because businesses sponsor it. And if there's right. a business that wants to sponsor a calendar, uh, sports calendar or schedules for, you know, football or soccer or whatever, uh, we'd be glad to have you print them up and we'll put them out places. But uh, the day of digital electronics is here, and uh, I just, if I don't. If I'm trying to remember something, I most of the time take a picture of it now because I know that my cell phone's going to stay pretty close right. to me, and I can go back and look at that picture sure. and say, oh, okay, that's what. But with this app, all you do is open it up, and it'll tell you what's happening that week. It'll give you all the athletic events that are happening that week. Works just like looking at a sports schedule. All right, go, cool, go. Cool. Coach, the uh, coffee pot is back in Tullahoma, or stays in Tullahoma, rather, uh, for another 12 months. As a coach, uh, you're, what, 20 and 5, 21 and 21 5? 21 and 5. 21 and 5 as a head coach. Very so. fortunate. Yeah. Most of the time we have, most of the time we have 
the better team. Yeah. And we should win. Uh -huh. But there have been a lot of years where uh, one of us might have the better team and still not win. Right. Uh, the type of game we had last night is the exception and not the rule over the years that I've been here. This, this is a huge rivalry, or has been uh, over the years, and it's been that way for a long time. And I think you were featured in an article in Tennessee in the last yeah. week, and you were talking about this rivalry. Right, and uh, 94th year, if I understand right, the only two years the schools have not played were 1943 and 1944 during World War II. Right. And that the rest of the time, they have played each other. Mr. Bob Couch, I remember sitting in his shop one day, this was years ago, and he told me some of the history of the game. And he said, back when the goalposts were made of wood, that if the visiting team won on the other one's field, that they were given the right to tear one of the goalposts down and carry it back to their hometown. <laughs> yeah, and so Unreal. interesting. You get in trouble for that now. <laughs> Nowadays, that'd be a very expensive <laughs> exactly, deal. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I think that may be the reason there's a trophy to pass back and right. forth instead of taking each other's goalposts. Right. Okay. That was that was probably a good plan years ago, but it was a great night for uh, uh, for Tullahoma and the kids played really really well and. Uh, uh, you don't get those games where you just kind of breathe easy through the uh, whole game much anymore. Uh, that's the f first one that we've had where the clock was running. Yeah. And we weren't on the wrong end of it <laughs> right. in, the, in at least the last four or five years. Right. So it was nice to get that. And um, we open up our region play against the defending region champion. In fact, they're the, the three-time defending champions. Over at Lewisburg, Marshall County. Uh, they beat Shelbyville last night 24-21. to 21. Uh, We'll have our hands full as that was two real good football teams playing each other. And we'll be their opening home ball game of the year. So right. it'll be a big challenge for us, but uh, we look forward to seeing what we can do. Right. Okay. And uh, that will be a challenging game, I guess, yes. based on what you said. Okay. All right, Coach. Uh, again, congratulations on a great win. Uh, as I mentioned just a moment ago, the coach is 21 and five against Coffee County. So, a good night uh, and a good good play by all the guys out there on the field too. And uh, we congratulate you on that and bringing making your community proud, bringing the uh, coffee pot back to Tullahoma for another year. Folks, thank you so much for watching the Coach Ollie Fifth Quarter Show. We'll see you again next week. Bye bye.